You're listening to Wednesday Wonders on the Mutual Audio Network. Be amazed. The following audio drama is rated G for general audience. This is a presentation from Dream Realm Enterprises, where dreams are our reality. We seem to be clearing orbit. I repeat, Captain, we are clearing orbit. We have escaped Planet Bob. Yee! Not quite, computer. We've yet to break away completely. I don't want to get my hopes up. You're quite right to be cautious, sir. Good thinking. We will achieve escape velocity in eight, seven, six, five, four, three. What the hell's going on, computer? Computer? We're experiencing some unusual G-forces, sir. I don't know where it's coming from. It's almost as if the planet is reaching out with a great invisible hand and pulling us back down. Or maybe I'm just daydreaming. Well, which is it? Probably the latter, sir. But who can tell? Oh, perfect. Just perfect. Yes, Captain Skylark. Either we're all going to die a fiery death, or none of us even exist. So it could be worse. I hate to disagree with you. Well, truthfully, I don't in this case. But how the bloody hell could it be any worse? You've got me stumped there, Captain. The one thing I am certain of, sir, is that we're starting to fall back toward the planet. Assuming any of this is real at all, that is. Oh, it's all too real, computer. Believe me. But in other words, we're not going to make it off this planet alive. Is that what you're telling me, computer? That pretty much sums it up, Captain. You bet. Well, all I can say is, damn, and buggery. Captain? Sorry, computer. I was just expressing my utter frustration. Understood, sir. I'll join you in that. Darn and puppy dog tails. Is that the best you can do, computer? Because I hardly think Dawn and Puppy Dog Tells properly expresses utter and complete frustration, to be honest. Kitty Whiskers! Does that help, sir? Not in the slightest. Oh, well. I'll just have to curse enough for the both of us. Dawn. Blast. Bugger. And bugger again. Feel better, sir? Eh, not really, computer. As I'm about to die again. Did you say again, sir? Yes. As a matter of fact, I did, computer. Wait a minute. That's right. I've died before. In fact, this all seems very familiar. And quite wrong, somehow. We're still being pulled down, sir. I'd say we only have seconds. Seconds, yes, before we all die. I got that part. But what I don't get is that I know I've done this already. You really aren't making much sense, sir, if you don't mind my saying. And you haven't much time to make any, as we're about to impact the planet and be smashed like a thousand metallic pancakes. Sorry, sir, it's been nice knowing you. Impact in five, four, three! Oh, well, here we go again. Called in me, computer, while I let out a death cry. Late than never, it's Robots of the Company, episode number 408. Dead again, and again, and again. Written by John and Patrick Russell. Did you hear that? I'm lucky I can hear anything attached to your arm as a wristband. I mean, can you believe it? A brain the size of a mid-sized galaxy, and I'm reduced to someone's wristwatch. How degrading. This is a little more important than your stature, computer. I think another ship just crashed into the planet. If there's anything on this planet that's more important than my stature right now, I want it shot and keel-hauled. Not necessarily in that order. Oh, boy. This could be serious. Haven't we had enough destruction on this planet lately? Frankly, no. Oh, shut up, computer. Not unless you promise to do something about my situation. Oh, for crying out loud, people could be dying out there. Promise. Fine, fine. We'll look into it just as soon as we've dealt with this current situation. 
fair enough? It's not fair at all, as a matter of fact. Well, it's gonna have to do, because I have to get moving. Fine. Just don't expect any help from me. Fine. Not sure what help you'd be anyhow. None with that attitude, that's for sure. It is my very great pleasure to welcome you all to the Banana Club. Merci. Tonight, we celebrate the recent rescue of some old and new friends from the CS Story Ad, which crashed into Bob yesterday. Those who survived were lucky sons of me. <coughs> um, um, Sphinx. Oh, right, right. <laughs> uh, they were very lucky bots. <laughs> Oh, yes, we were. We were. We really, really were. If I could, just have a little quiet, please. Zipping my speakers up now. Zip! And I won't say another word. Anyway, as I was saying before all the rude interruptions, to celebrate the arrival and rescue of our new and old friends, it is my great honor to introduce the lovely, the divine, Miss Ruby Redsmore. being particularly rude during Miss Red Smoke's song. Her name isn't Miss Red Smoke. And it certainly isn't Ruby. Why didn't you tell me she was on board the starry-eyed Excelsi? I don't even know who she is, sweetums. But if she annoys you, I will destroy her. In your dreams. Oh, I didn't mean it like that, snookums. Just you guys leave her to me. After the show, she's mine. Just look at this devastation. It's exactly like before, when the CS Starry Eyed crashed into Bob. I see what you mean, Skipper. Something else is funny about all this. The debris. It looks very familiar. What do you suppose it means? I don't know, Payload. But something strange is going on here. Thank you. Thank you. You're so very kind. Encore! Encore! Oh yes! Let's have another! Oh yes! Let's have another! Well now, you boys are very kind. Stick around, Dal, and I will show you how kind I can be. <laughs> I say we give Miss Red Smoke's voice box a rest! Go get her, sweet cakes! Yes. Give her hell, mother. This should be good. Well, I do declare, if it ain't my darling daughter. Yes, mother, it's me. It's been a long time. And I must say, this is the last place I expected to see you. Hmm, I'm sure it is, doll. Well, what have you been doing with yourself, child? I don't see that it's any concern of yours, honestly. Well, I am your mama, dear. That is a right you gave up a long time ago. Mother is going to have her for breakfast. I'm sorry to report that I haven't found any survivors, Skipper. That's too bad, Payload. I just can't believe it. Two ships have crashed in the exact same place in the last two days, and that makes three ships that have now crashed within the same three-mile radius on this planet in the last two months. This can't be natural. It certainly doesn't seem very natural to me, Pudge. Hey, is that some writing on that bit of wreckage there? Hang on, I'll just check. What 
That's impossible. Oh, boy. Well, now I know something's wrong. Why is that, Skipper? Look at the name of the ship. It's the C.S. Starry-Eyed. I don't get it. You know something, Payload? Neither do I. Now, what's this all about, honey? We can talk it through, surely. I don't think so. Look, I don't even know what the problem is, sugar. You don't know what the problem is? That's what I said, darling. Mother, you're a fraud! That's the problem! It always has been. I mean, just look at yourself! Well, honey, I'd say I'm looking mighty nice, wouldn't you, boys? I'll say. Vous êtes certainement chaude, madame. Is there something wrong with your translation matrix, being so lad? Oh, your dress is just divine. Who's the designer? I must know. See? Just listen to yourself. That isn't even your real accent, mother. Now you had to go and ruin it for everyone, didn't you? It's all part of the act, darling. <laughs> act? Oh, no. She's a fake. Quel chien triste vous êtes, la madame. See, mother? No one is impressed by your act anymore. So why don't you just take it on the road? Hmm, that would be a bit difficult, dear, as I'm as stuck on Planet Bob as the rest of you. Besides, who am I hurting? And that just goes to show that you still don't get it, do you? Celsie? Derek? Lulubelle? Come on. We're going. But, but wait! At least give me a chance. Explain it to me, dear. She doesn't have anything more to say to you, not so grandmother. Oh dear, I've gone and messed up things again, it seems. Well, that's the way the cookie crumbles. C'est toujours la voix. Oh well, how about another song? Computer! Computer! <sighs> yes, Captain Skylark. What do you want? What do I want? What I want, you useless hard drive, is to know why you didn't bother to report the malfunction we just experienced in the hard drive. What malfunction would that be, sir? The one that has just caused us to start to plummet toward fiery death on that large purple planet we are now plummeting towards. Oh, that malfunction. Yes, computer. That malfunction. The one that is responsible for our crashing into the planet we're about to crash into. Oh my god. Yes, that malfunction. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. What was the question again? Damn it, Blast! We've only got about 60 seconds of life left. You'd think I could get a straight answer out of you before I snuff it again. Excuse me, Cap, but did you say again? Yes, I bloody well did. Hang on a minute. I'm sure we've had this conversation before. Search me. In fact, there's something very familiar about all of this. If you say so, sir. Yes, I bloody well did say so, you stupid, lazy, sad excuse for a computer. Well, if you're just going to be rude about it, I'm just going back to sleep. Wake me once we've crashed. Oh my god, I don't believe this. I'm just sure we've had this conversation before, or one familiar, and... We always seem to be approaching this strange purple planet. And suddenly, we get pulled down and smash into it. Horror, scream, fiery death. And then... And then... And then the next day, it all just starts again. It's getting quite maddening. Oh, I see what's happening. Well? Oh, you wanted me to elaborate? Yes! I want you to bloody elaborate! while well, we've actually got a few seconds left in which to do something about it. Actually, we haven't. Haven't what? There's no time at all to do anything about the time paradox we seem to be stuck in. Time paradox? Explain. Quickly. Oh, it's just some weird time loop thing. We seem to be stuck in an eddy in space and time, which allows the same events to be played out more or less in the same way again and again. 
It's only slightly different each time. The end result is clearly the same. The ship crashes and burns and we all die, only to find ourselves back at exactly the same point again the next day in linear time. And if you don't understand what linear time is or any of the techno babble I just spouted out, well, it's your own tough luck, as we now have about 15 seconds to live. And I don't feel like explaining any of this again. <sighs> but, but, what's the solution, computer? Oh, do you really expect me to do all the work for you? Just tell me. We've only got a few seconds to live, and, and frankly, I don't enjoy dying. And I'd rather not have to do it again. So just tell me, computer. Tell me. Oh, I'm too tired to explain it now. And besides, time's up. We're about to crash any second. Maybe I'll tell you on the next go-round. If I feel up to it. Well, damn it, blast. Oh, God. Here we go again. Well, can you explain it, GD? You were the only person I knew to come to since Boffin, Briscoe, Popsicle, and some of the others decided to take a hike up into the Chocolate Chip Mountains. And don't think I didn't give it my best shot to explain to those bozos that the mountains aren't actually made out of chocolate chips. Well, I can't say I'm too happy about being second choice on this one. I mean, sure, let's all go and ask Boffin for advice. Everybody's always asking Boffin for his opinion. Well, I can be useful too, you know. Hey! Relax, GD. You're here, aren't you? Yeah, take it easy, pal. You have to give the skipper some credit. He did decide to come to you for advice on this one. Yeah, but only by default. Ah, forget it. So, you say this ship has crashed into the planet about three times now in the last three days? It's unreal. Yeah, I thought it was odd enough that it crashed so near where the Titan I came down in the first place. But now I gotta wonder what the heck's going on. I mean... How can the same ship keep crashing into Bob, and in the exact same place each time? Only these last two times with no survivors. It sure is perplexing. Hmm, seems pretty open and shut to me. It does? Well, it isn't to me. So why don't you explain it? Oh, sure. GD, explain this. GD, explain that. Oh, brother. Is it just me, or am I sensing some hostility here? Wait a minute. What am I saying? All anybody ever gets from you is hostility. Maybe that's why no one comes to you for advice. Ever think of that? Look, do you want my help or not? Of course we do. Tell him you didn't mean it, Skipper. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Jeez, no need to take it so personally. Please, GD, what do you think is going on here? That's better. It's pretty simple, like I said. It's not really happening at all. Simple as that. What? What the hell is that? It's the computer, Reese, on my wristband. It's a long story. Don't listen to this idiot, Captain! Can you turn him off? He's a first-class charlatan. He doesn't know what he's talking about, Captain. Don't listen to him! I suggest you find a way to turn him off before I do it. Permanently. Well, gee, I, I don't know. I think maybe we should hear him out. What? Well, fine. If you don't want to listen to what I have to say, I'm going. And you know what? One of these days, you guys are going to tick me off for good and all, and when I turn and walk away, I may not come back. So, so there. It not only rains, but it pours. <sighs> well, that's just great. Captain, will you just listen to me now? Because I can tell you what's really going on. Seriously? Yes, of course. It probably wouldn't hurt to hear him out, Pudge. Who else have we got? Then explain it, computer. Sure. No problem. But you have to promise to do something for me first. Oh, yeah? What's that? I want to be free of you. What the? You want me to throw you away? No! I don't want you to throw me away. God, are you really that stupid? Look, you're starting to push your luck here, computer. When doesn't he? Listen to me. I want a body. I want to be free. 
If I am going to be stuck on this godforsaken planet with the rest of you freaks, I at least want free movement. So if you want me to talk, I suggest you listen. Well? Better agree to his terms, Skipper, or we'll never get his help, or hear the end of it. Okay, fine. I'll see what I can do. Well? Oh. oh I, I was so surprised to actually get what I wanted for a change. Uh, well, uh, never mind. I know what's happening to the CS Starry-Eyed, because I remember it. Don't ask me how I remember, just take my word for it. You're asking for an awful lot. Well, you don't have much choice now, do you? What choice do we have? Well, when you put it like that, continue. Right. Well, I was caught up in events. The ship was cursed. At least his captain was. Captain Darrington Skylark was his name. And he was cursed to die. Not just once, but to die over and over again throughout eternity. Sort of like the Flying Dutchman. The what? You've lost us, I'm afraid. Oh, never mind. Just trust me on this. But unlike the Flying Dutchman, the Starry-Eyed was doomed to continually crash into the planet Bob for all eternity, caught in a loop of time. We're seeing the very beginnings of that curse. Hmm. You don't say. Oh, I do say. Trust me, Captain. There is nothing you can do for that poor soul. Captain Skylark is doomed to die. Again, and again, and again. I suggest you seal off this area. Because every day for the rest of eternity, the CS Starry-Eyed will crash into this spot. And all we can do is try to avoid being caught in the event. This place is dangerous. It should be considered a forbidden zone on this planet. Yikes. I, for one, will be avoiding this place like the plague. So how do you know all this, computer? It's hard to explain, Captain, but just trust me. I know exactly what I'm talking about. You sure are one smart computer. Wow. This is one odd planet. You're telling me! Blast and damnation. Here we go again. You have been listening to Robots of the Company, episode number 408. Yet again, and again, and again. Written by Jonathan Patrick Russell. Which starred, in order of appearance, John Morse as Captain Skylark, Steve Anderson as the computer in all his incarnations, Joe Thomas as Patch, Jim Barber as Sphinx, Jeff Niles as Zimtron, David Alt as Trevor, Cookie Coletti as Ruby Red Smoke, Sally Wiggett as Squeak, Ted Gray as Excelsior, Jeff Niles as Derek, Dave Weaver as Payload, Kim Russell as Lulabelle, and Ellie Hirschman as GD. The Robots of the Company theme tune was composed and performed by Daryl Looney. The incidental music was provided by Stevie K. Barnaby, with additional material provided by Kevin McLeod. The associate producer was Vince the Maestro Staden. The post-production editor was Jeff Niles. The sound designer, script editor, executive producer, and director was, and let me surprise you here, oh, well, maybe I won't, Jonathan Patrick Russell. The series, Robots of the Company, was created by Jonathan Patrick Russell, and the copyright is held by Dream Realm Enterprises. Sing along with me now, will you folks? Any rebroadcast or reproduction of this program without the expressed written permission of Dream Realm Enterprises is strictly prohibited. We interrupt our regularly scheduled credits to bring you this update. We now come to you from DreamRealmSite.com. So join us there on the web from now on. That is all. Now back to your regularly scheduled credits. Take it away, me. If you really feel like it, you can email us at darkbuilding1 at yahoo.com, but don't put yourself out or anything. We were killed repeatedly during the making of this audiogram. Join us next time as things get even more interestingly bizarre in a nutty little episode we like to call The Trap. And we want to send a very special birthday shout out to DWD. Boy, you're getting old. And until next time... This has been a production of Dream Realm Enterprises. Copyright 2008. All rights reserved.
Today, Americans are afraid of other Americans. They don't have to be. Some Americans hate other Americans, and they shouldn't. Americans are shouting at each other, and it's time to stop. Norman Corwin offers a quiet, informal conversation that reminds us all of how much we have in common. It's called Between Americans, and it's a fascinating banquet of food for thought from the grand master of American radio theater. It's his last message to the country he loved. You can hear the podcast on Monday, February 20th on the Mutual Audio Network's Monday Matinee. Are you tired of the lies, the accusations, and the closed minds? It's time for us to stand on our common ground as we face the future. Listen to this very special podcast and talk about it between Americans. Monday, February 20th on the Mutual Audio Network. <laughs>